Between the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, here's the console that I love more and would sacrifice my life to make sure it comes out victorious. Drum roll? Neither. I don't give a shit. In terms of video making, I've now come full circle, saying that four years ago I made a dog shit video about my stance on the console war between the Xbox One and PS4. Trust me, it was bad enough for me to rewatch the video, so I'll spare you the stuttering, voice cracks, and outlandish points from an idiotic middle school student and summarize it. I said both Xbox and PlayStation are great and they can't stand to PC gaming. I know it's a bold statement from an 8th grader that got 20 frames on Counter-Strike, but I was confident in my opinion, even though it was equivalent to horse shit. Now that time has passed, I'm not 14 eating Pop-Tarts and watching regular show. Never mind, scratch that. Now that I'm not 14, my opinions have changed on the current console war. Maybe my views have changed because I'm an evil, cynical monster, but my point of view of equality has reduced to atoms. Between the modem and the mini fridge, I'm not rooting for one over another, but I'm not gonna bullshit and say they both stand as equals at the moment. One, because it's just simply not true, and two, because it's pretty clear why through observation. If I were to preach kumbaya on how all gaming consoles are special as we shit rainbows and hold hands, then I wouldn't be truthful about my feelings, like the special snowflake that I am. I honestly don't give a fuck about consoles for their branding or performance, because I'm an alpha elite PC gamer. I was originally an Xbox player, but after the realization that PC is just better for me, I started playing a majority of PC games. PC gaming can have better performance when it comes to running games, and if you truly give a shit about specs over branding, you wouldn't be offended by this statement. I know there's this old, outdated stereotype that PC gamers are nerd-ass losers with too much money. Even though that's true for a lot of them, the best way to experience general gaming is by a PC, and if you deny that, you're biased. But it also goes both ways. As a PC gamer, if I was to say that consoles are stupid and unnecessary, I would be a stubborn prick. In truth, a lot of people are not dedicated enough to invest a lot of money toward a PC rig or just simply don't care enough or can't afford to. A lot of console players are children or the average Joe who gets off their 9 to 5 shifts and want to relax and play casually. So if you're a PC player carrying around this ego that you play games all day while normal society turns on their gaming box then please fuck off. The people who could breathe through their nose are talking. Ever since Fortnite released, PC gaming has become way more mainstream with the general public coming to terms that performance will always be best on a PC. So with consoles being inferior machines in terms of performance, the only edge a console has is in its exclusive titles. As I stated, I was more of an Xbox player growing up than a PlayStation player. My stepdad owned an original Xbox because of Halo. Then he got an Xbox 360 over the PS3 because it was the superior console at the time. And if you disagree, I'll put my nunchucks up, but you're bullshitting. The Xbox 360 blew out the PS3 in its console war and it was due to its exclusives. Halo 3, Gears of War, Forza, Dead Rising. Wine, piss, and shit all you want, but there was no competition until the end of the console war when PS3 pulled out its heavy hitter knockout machines. But because of the Xbox 360 success, I got an Xbox One while my stepdad got a PS4. And this was due to me being 12 at the time and not being aware about the bad PR around the Xbox One. Yeah, the Xbox One sucked dick and had an identity crisis contemplating if it wanted to be a Roku more than a console, while being priced at $500 compared to the PlayStation 4's $400 price tag. The new controllers suck cock as well, not innovating nearly as much compared to the DualShock 4, and didn't even have an interior audio jack until its updated version. The Kinect as well was a shit show unless you're lonely with no friends and enjoyed the company of asking your Xbox to record something 30 times before it complied. All these issues were when the console launched, and would have been worse if the ideas from its PR debacle didn't get cut due to Microsoft being called out on their bullshit. Now, with the current console war coming to a close, it's time for everybody to be honest and admit that PlayStation won this console war, whether you like it or not. While Microsoft had their thumbs up their asses, Sony and Nintendo smacked it out of the park with game titles and console sales. And yes, I include Nintendo because even though they aren't necessarily going head to head with anybody, the Switch has been a complete success on Nintendo's part. Spider Man, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, Uncharted 4, The Last of Us 2. I know it's controversial to say that, but Crimea River. And Xbox had Halo 5, Gears of War 5, and Crackdown 3. I'm not including Cuphead because it was also on PC, and then later added to Switch. Microsoft had so many underwhelming exclusives on their console to the point where I gave my original Xbox to my little sister as a Fortnite machine, and got a PlayStation 4 to play Sony's exclusives. Other than personal feelings of Sony outdoing Microsoft, it's also fact. PS4 did laps on the Xbox in terms of sales and generated money. But with a new console around the corner, I'm going to state my honest opinion. Not out of favoritism, but what I see as a logical, subjective point of view. Both console prices haven't been revealed as they're both at a standoff to see whose is more expensive. But the PS5 still has a massive edge at the moment. Before you whine and type a fucking bible about how I'm a biased Sony cockwriter, I'll state that the Xbox Series X, which, wow that's a shit ass name, has better hardware compared to the PlayStation 5, which will possibly make it also more expensive for a slim advantage. And as a PC gamer, I've already stated that I don't care about a console's hardware, and what I care about is the console's exclusives. And Microsoft has either shot themselves in the foot or did a very risky, generous move by allowing Xbox exclusive titles and Game Pass to be purchased on PC. Halo Infinite 
Infinite is exclusive to Xbox and PC. Gears of War is exclusive to Xbox and PC. Future Microsoft games will be available on PC. Why do I want to buy a new Xbox when I can play Halo Infinite on my better PC rig? Or in Sony's case, I can't play Spider-Man on my PC, making it more tempting to get a PS5. It's making Microsoft more money because PC consumers can now buy their games, but it will affect their console sales because if I have a budget to only get one console, why would I get an Xbox when I could play all my games on PC? People buy Switches to play Zelda and Animal Crossing, not because the Switch is a fucking good console. The Switch is dog shit spec wise. They buy it because you can't play Mario or Zelda legally anywhere else besides Nintendo's consoles. Consumers care more about games than hardware. So even if I didn't have a PC, why would I want to risk and gamble my possibly $700 on Halo Infinite when the past two Halo games have been very flawed? Where Sony's launch titles have a better reputation and more variety. The only reason I see someone getting an Xbox over a PS5 is loyalty. But from an open point of view, there's no reason for me to get an Xbox when I can have Xbox games on PC and I can play my Sony exclusives on PS5. At the end of the day, it's a subjective take on consoles. Buy what you want to buy. This is just my point of view. The PS5 is looking to be a safer option for the next generation of consoles and Xbox is going to have to work very hard for the mini fridge to even stand equal. If you disagree with me, I genuinely want to know why. Discussion is healthy. Thanks for watching. This was a quick discussion, but if you're new, I suggest you look at the rest of my channel. I make gaming videos and film analysis. If you really don't give a shit and wanted to see if I talk shit about your brand, Sugar Daddy, and I disappointed you, then please still subscribe. Peace.